Hello everybody, this is Mr. Arosena and on today's lesson uh, we're going to continue our study of solubility um, by talking about how we can calculate solubility and ion concentrations. Okay, so a uh, quick reminder, solubility, well, we defined it the other day as uh, the amount of solute that can be dissolved at a given temperature in a given amount of solvent. Okay. So today we'll discuss a couple of things about how we can calculate solubility given some information. All right, so uh, first let's discuss what molar solubility is. So the solubility we discussed uh, the other day was more of a sort of just general solubility, but we can describe solubility in kind of two ways. The first is with molar solubility which the name kind of suggests what it is. It's just the amount of moles that can be dissolved in a particular amount of solvent. Okay. And in this form, the solubility is expressed as moles per liter. Okay. Now, from this quantity, we can actually define another type of solubility as mass solubility. Now uh, we can define mass solubility as mass per liter. This is usually how solubility is expressed in a lot of places. It's usually expressed as mass solubility, but sometimes it's useful to express things in molar solubility if, um, put it, if well, it depends on what information we're given. Okay. Now this triangle here just sort of gives you sort of the um, how moles mass and molar mass kind of relate to each other similar to I guess like a density triangle you might have seen in a previous science class so let's go to an example just a quick example of how to calculate the molar solubility of something now molar solubility um, generally you can calculate solubility once you've figured out the um, at what point the solution has become saturated so for example here in a solution of this is silver bromate, a uh, solution of silver bromate gets saturated once you dissolve 1.96 grams of silver bromate. And once this, this quantity here has been dissolved, the solution becomes saturated. This is an example of a very low solubility salt, so low solubility. Because 1.96 grams is not a lot. All right, so now we're going to find out what is the molar solubility. So molar solubility, molar solubility is just how many moles per liter can we divide or can, can we get into this solution? So what we can do is we can convert the 1.96 grams of silver bromate. We'll convert that into moles of silver bromate. Okay. All right, so uh, we have our 1.96 grams of uh, silver bromate. Um, I forgot to mention that we should actually, I need to give you guys a volume so we can actually calculate the molar solubility. So let's say that um, we'll, we're dissolving this much silver bromate in, let's say 100 milliliters of water. All right. So let's go and convert then um, the 1.96 grams of silver bromate to moles of silver bromate. So if, in order to do that, we will need the molar mass of silver bromate. Okay, so let's quickly do this. So the molar mass of silver bromate will take silver. Let me just look this up. Uh, so molar mass of silver bromate, um, I can just Google all this information. 235.77 grams per mole. Okay. So now to convert from 
uh, grams to moles we can take our 1.96 grams we'll multiply this by one mole per 235.77 grams so this will give me a total of let's pull out the calculator all right so 1.96 times 1 divide by 235.77 so this is a total of not a lot 0 0.00831 moles of silver bromate and for the molar solubility we have to divide that by liters so this will be 0 0.0083 moles over 100 milliliters so 0 0.1 liters so this is a total concentration of 0 0.083 moles per liter now moles per liter is just molarity so this will be the molar solubility of the silver bromate given these conditions okay all right there we go. now uh going from here uh, another example would be if we are given the molar solubility of a substance so that's the next example um, here we're given the molar solubility of a substance and we're asked to express this in grams per liter so we can figure out what the mass solubility is well the process is very similar we know that for um, lead iodide the molar solubility of lead iodide is 1.37 times 10 negative 3 moles so this is basically 1.37 times 10 to the negative 3 uh, moles per liter so all we have to do here is basically change my moles we want to convert that to grams per liter so we will just take this amount here and we'll convert it from moles to grams so moles to grams in order to do that we will multiply this by the molar mass of lead iodide which we'll do a quick look up so lead iodide has a huge molar mass 461.01 grams per mole carry out the multiplication total of that seems a little high still 0 0.631 oh wait never mind that's grams haha uh -huh. that's about right no. so lead iodide solubility of 0 0.631 grams per liter yeah. yeah so that's how we can calculate the molar solubility so previous example was to calculate molar solubility this one just calculate from molar solubility to mass solubility All right. so again solubility is just a measure of just how much stuff you can dissolve in a certain amount of um, solvent and it's easy to express either as a concentration in molarity so that's molar solubility or we can express it in mass solubility as grams per liter right now uh in a lot of cases we're very interested in the concentration of the ions that are involved in the uh, or that are present in the solution so it's very useful to sometimes to be able to calculate the ion concentrations so ion concentration is to, by definition just the concentration of each ion in the solution so that's a very self-explanatory in that case so here's a quick example um, of how to calculate ion concentration so let's take uh, the compound sodium phosphate and let's dissolve it when you dissolve sodium phosphate it will dissolve into three sodium ions so three sodium ions and one phosphate ion okay so the ion concentrations if i were to take uh one mole of sodium phosphate 
and I dissolve it. Because of the way that the sodium phosphate dissolves into three sodium ions and one phosphate ion, if I had one mole of it, so one mole of sodium phosphate will dissolve into three moles of Na+, so three moles of sodium ions, and then one mole of phosphate ions. Now, if these were, if this was a concentration, because concentration is dependent on the mole amounts, then the concentrations would be as follows. If I had one molar sodium phosphate, it would then dissolve into a three molar concentration of sodium ions and a one molar concentration of phosphate ions. Because again, sodium phosphate, if I have one mole of sodium phosphate and I dissolve it, I will get three moles of sodium and one mole of phosphate. So if I had one molar sodium phosphate and I dissolve it, then I would have three molar sodium and one molar of phosphate. And so that's how the ion concentrations are calculated. Basically, how does it dissolve? And then these mole ratios here, so the mole ratios here, will determine what the ion concentrations are, provided you know what the concentration of the original um, substance was. Okay. Right. Now, what gets interesting is if the compound does not completely dissolve. This is where things get much more interesting. Much, much more interesting. So here's an example. This is um, silver carbonate, and it will dissolve into two silver ions and one carbonate ion. So let's suppose then that the concentration of silver carbonate is as follows. So 1.2 times 10 to the negative 4 molar. Okay, what will be the concentrations of each ion? Well. The silver ion concentration will simply be um, because I have this two for every for every silver carbonate that gets or that gets dissolved, it will create two silver ions. So the silver ion concentration will just be two times one point two times ten to the negative four molar. So this will be. 2.4 times 10 to the negative 4 molar. Now the concentration of the carbonate ion, kind of do the same thing. The carbonate ion has a 1 to 1 ratio with the silver carbonate. So this will just be 1 times 1.2 times 10 to the negative 4 molar for a total of 1.2 times 10 to the negative 4 molar. Okay. So that's how we can figure out the concentration of each ion. So if I know what concentration of the silver carbonate gets dissolved, then I can figure out just what the concentration of each individual ion is when, when calculating their ion concentrations. Now, in a dilution, um, when you're mixing ions together, you have to be mindful of um, the fact that the ion concentration will get diluted because you're mixing two things and you're changing the volume. So in this example, uh, we have half a milliliter of some amount of chlorine minus is added to 1.5 milliliters of, oh, I forgot to add some bromine concentration to this. So let's say the bromine has a concentration of also 0 0.2 molar. Okay. What are the ion concentrations of the mixture after they get mixed together? Well, going back to our dilution equation, we have M1V1 equals m2 v2 we have to apply this um, equation twice once for the chlorine and then again for the bromine and partly because um, the volume changes so that the concentration must change okay so volume changes so concentration will change as well. Okay, I'm gonna need a little bit more room, so let me just grab this. Nope. Oh. All right. 
So for the um, chlorine, so let's let's do the chlorine first, and we can do the oops. Yeah, let's just do the chlorine first. Yeah. Chlorine first, and then we'll deal with the bromine after. All right. So chlorine. Um, the original concentration of chlorine was zero point two molar. Uh, with a volume of 0 0.5 milliliters. I'm actually gonna keep the 0 0.5 milliliters as is. Well, can I do that? I probably shouldn't. Let's convert it into full-on liters. So 0, 0, uh, let's see, 0, 0, 0, 5. And there you go. And that will equal, let me just move this out of the way a bit. That will equal the new concentration. Of M2. M2 and then the new volume. Well, the new volume we actually know because we can just add these two together. Let's add those two together. So we get that's one and a half plus half a milliliter. So a total one milliliter. So zero. Yeah. 0 0.002. Right. So, uh, sorry about that. I have to fix a few things. So let's continue on with the calculation of M2. So M2, uh, so this is the new molarity of chlorine, or the chlorine ion. This will just be 0 0.2 molar times 0 0.0005 liters, all divided by 0 0.002 two liters which will give us throw into our calculator 0 0.2 times 0 0.005 zero no, zero 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 five divided by 0 0.002 so this is a new molarity of 0 0.05 molar okay so that's the new concentration of the cl minus ion so concentration of the chlorine ion okay so now you get the concentration of the bromine ion uh kind of the same thing so the bromine ion had a concentration of shoot what was the concentration I'm trying to remember now uh, one or oh, 0 0.2 and it's the same as the same as the chlorine so 0 0.2 molar bromine uh we had 1.5 milliliters of bromine convert that to liters and then we want to find the new concentration and the volume of bromine is now the 0 0.002 liters that after everything is said and combined all right so then m2 ends up being kind of similar calculation 0 0.2 molar times 0 0.0015 liters divided by 0 0.002 liters so we get the following um, 0 0.2 times 0 0.0015 divided by 0 0.002 so we get total concentration of 0 0.2 one five molar. This will be the new concentration of the bromine ion. There you go. There. So as I can calculate, so when things get diluted, um, the the volume changes. So we have to run a dilution calculation to figure out what the new concentration of chlorine and bromine are. And this is especially important if you are mixing. Um, multiple sorry if you're mixing multiple um, solutions together uh, if the volume changes you can use the dilution equation so we can use this equation here 
to help us figure out what the new ion concentrations will be because the first part this part here allows us to calculate the moles of that particular ion that are present and then when we change the volume when this volume changes we can then calculate the new concentration as per um, this equation all right okay so that's kind of a brief rundown of how to calculate ion concentrations and how to calculate molar solubility okay uh, your assignment uh, for today is as follows assignment for today is as follows all right uh, i should have plenty of time to work on it and if you guys have any questions you can ask me when you see me next wait have fun